Morning folks, welcome to Fanta Fishing. Today you join me in a video that I didn't think I'd actually make. So I'm targeting a species that I've not targeted before, certainly not on the channel, and that's the bream. Uh, a lot of people's nightmares, but when they get big they certainly are impressive. So I've come down to a carp lake, I fished it last week, see if I can pick out any of the big bream. I know there's boilie eating bream in here and they do get big. Um, last week when I fished down here, I fished for the tench and I had a really good session. I had over 20 tench and a big eel. So today the plan is to try and find a swim. I'm just looking at the lake now and it looks like there's a few available. I want to be in the open water because the shallower end has got weed in it which is ideal for the tench, but I've always found shoals of bream prefer to feed on a clear bottom. Right guys, so a little bit of a change of plan. Um, couldn't get a bite on the other lake, um, it just seemed dead. I know they very recently spawned on there, um, but it was really busy, there was loads of carp anglers turning up and casting and bits and pieces, and I just didn't see anything that made me want to stay. So instead of just sitting there all day, twiddling my thumbs, thinking am I wasting my time, I moved on to another little lake where I know that there is still some big bream, but there's a lot more smaller ones as well, and there's a few tench and some carp. So I've just come on here for the today, so hopefully get a few bites. Um, about two minutes after I put the first rod out, I had a really small little skimmer. I didn't get it on camera because all the camera equipment was still packed away. Um, but both rods out, same method on the feeders. Feeder mix already still all made up, so hopefully we can get amongst a few fish. First fish of the day. Literally got the take and whatever it was just come up and smashed to the top of the surface. Before I could even get to the rod. I think it's a bream because it's coming in like a bit of a wet paper bag. Yeah. I think it might have a bit of weed around its head. That was worth the move, I've been here about 10 minutes. Boom, first one of the day. Put the net over there. I'll give it a quick way. It's not very big, but not really targeted brain before, so it'd be nice just to get an average on the size. Five pounds twelve. Slimy. Hated by some, but the target species today, it's got all these spawning marks on him. If that's the average size, then probably in for a good day today. Well worth the move after 10 minutes in the new lake. 
Right guys, so that fish came on a lobworm. Um, so, they're quite in hot demand at the moment due to the old corona. Um, there's not a lot of worms about. I think it's because they come in from abroad and obviously all the flights and that are messed up. But I've got a big pot of lobs here. I've been keeping them alive since I last went tench fishing. Um, so a few months now. And I share these with uh, my, my pet African bullfrog. Uh, who, who eats them on a daily basis and any that's left over come fishing with me and, and vice versa so very simple rig um, helicopter style 40 gram feeder ready heli kit on there fluorocarbon trace size 10 hook we have a quick stop on the hair and all I'm doing is using the quick stop tool And going through around about the middle of the worm, threading it up through the middle of the body, and out near the saddle, turn the quick stop, pull it down tight, and that's your presentation. So I'll feed this, fill this feeder up. It's a mixture of pellets, corn, ground bait. Um, put it out, try and get it on the same spot every time. It's not a very far truck, so it's quite easy to do without having to measure out and things. Um, and I'm getting loads of bites on this now. So I think what I'm going to do, I've got one out on a, on a wafter boilie. I'm just going to leave that one. Uh, it could pick up a bonus carp or a bigger fish, but it's certainly not as many bites as on the worm. So I'm just going to leave that one because I think I'd struggle to fish with two rods on worms because it'd just be too much action. So I'm going to leave this one on the worm, that one on the boilie and see what happens. There's been a bit of a lull in the action. I think it's mainly due to the, the heat. It's got really hot. I was getting annihilated by Rudd, and she said another pickup. I just swapped over to corn from the worm. Got a feeling this might be a tench. Oh no, it's a brain. So I actually put up a little bit of a fight. Oops. Not quite as big as the other one. Feels like another bream. There's lots of carp out on the surface. I think if you had surface gear and you wanted to catch them, you could have a few quite easily today.
shoal of rod down there. He's coming through to swim. Bream is actually putting up a fight, which is nice. Don't look a bad size, I think it's probably bigger than the... It's probably the biggest one of the day. That's a good size one. That's a lovely sized fish that. Well, in fairness, this is a proper slab. Didn't actually realise the size of it bringing it in. The old sweet con doing a trick again. There was two grains of real sweet corn and one grain of artificial and it was balancing it lovely. Eight pound four ounce. So by design, that's a PB. Proper chunk. Look how miserable it looks. <laughs> but yeah, for a daytime bite, I'm really chuffed with that. We'll stick him in the net for a minute. Take a couple of steels and then release him. Right guys, so as you can probably see, I've got a few more fish now. Um, the ones that I've been catching that are only small, I'm not going to include in the video. But um, really chuffed with that last fish. Um, nice to have a bream that actually pulls back as well, put up a good account for itself. Really wide fish. I think that's where they carry their weight. Um, but yeah, I've had I've had big bream in the past when carp fishing, but I've never weighed them or even probably put them on the bank. It's just unhooking the net jobby and release. But certainly gives me a benchmark now of a PB uh, and something to aim to try and beat in future sessions. Um, still on the road towards a double and I'd love a double figure fish uh, and I understand that people fish for many years and not have one but um, I'm enjoying today it's lovely weather I've got a nice sort of shady swim here with a little bit of sun that comes through um, and I'm picking up the odd fish so I did think and I did consider going home because it was so warm there was nothing going on there was no bites uh, I could see the carp cruising around on the surface um, not interested in any food and I thought the bream would probably be with them but there's obviously still the odd one cruising about feeder mix is going down to the bottom and they're getting onto the um, bait and we are having the odd run so still got a few more hours left yet just going to chill out, enjoy myself and hopefully we can get a few more Seems to be a little bit of a feeding window now. Just done that last update. Put the camera to one side and the rod's gone off again. This one doesn't feel anything special at all. But it's a positive sign that this fish in the area getting down on the bait and it shows that consistently keep casting out the feeder, building up a better bait is the one. There we go. And you can still have them during the day when it's boiling hot.
go. Lovely old job. Not going to miss about too much with this fish. Another good one, say around about the six pound mark. But he's unhooked now, slipping back. It is absolutely baking now. Um, I'm teetering on the edge of starting to burn. There's not really any shade in the swim now. Um, not near enough to the rods anyway. Probably going to give it another hour or so. Um, but for those interested in what goes into the ground bait mix today, I thought I'd just do a, a minute or two section on the ground bait. So bream aren't exactly picky about baits, um, but obviously you've got to remember that they have got smaller mouths than species like carp. Um, so in the ground bait today, I didn't want to fill them up. Not that I think that I would, because at the moment they're pre-spawn and they're eating everything. But the ground bait mix is Sonia Bait's bream feeder. Does what it says on the tin. It's a nice light colour, it's quite sweet, uh, and it binds really well. Um, so that's what I use ground bait wise. In that mix, bearing in mind I was spotting some out earlier, I use two packs of the Fin Perfect feeder pellets. Uh, they're two mil, and when they take on water, they get really sticky. So you can actually use these just on their own, and when you push them together, they just turn into a paste. Now, I've been using sweet molasses. This is actually run out. What I've been doing is putting some lukewarm lake water into a bait tub, adding the molasses, giving it a swill around, um, and then adding that to the mix. The reason I do that is because sometimes if you tip the molasses straight into the mix, it just goes into sticky balls and it doesn't actually get uh, distributed through the whole mix. So if you mix it into a bait tub and put it in, uh, it distributes it a lot better. Um, I then put that straight through the riddle, make it nice and fluffy, and I've been adding sweet corn. It's just cheap stuff, uh, cheap frozen bag from Lidl or similar. Um, and that's about it really. Uh, I didn't bother adding chopped worms or anything like that, uh, mainly due to the fact that worms are hard to come by at the moment. Uh, and I've just been feeding that in little and often, casting every 15 minutes or so, building up a nice bed of bait. Uh, I've also been feeding another swim. You probably noticed that the majority of my fish have come on one rod. Uh, and that's like I said earlier, I wanted a, fi a fish effectively. Uh, and I was considering just fishing the one rod, but I did put a boilie on the other rod and just put it down in the margins and I've been throwing a few bits of corn over the top just to see how we get on and more like a sort of sleeper rod if it goes it's a bonus if it doesn't then at least it was fishing but I'm going to give it a little bit longer like I say it's absolutely boiling the sun's right in the middle of the sky now so we might be able to nick one or two more but if not then I'll catch it before I go um, but I'm confident we might be able to get one more bite It's hot conditions, there's no need to have them out of the water if you don't need to. I'm not one to particularly push products on people. Um, I will tell people what I use, but I won't go out there and tell you, you must go and use them and you must buy them. But credit where it's due, I need to speak to you about the rod that I'm using. Now I've mentioned it in other videos before, and that's the Coram All Rounder. Now this rod is 11 foot, it's a pound and a quarter test curve. 
and it's very budget friendly. This rod has accounted for seven different PBs for me and seven different species. So that just shows how much I've used it and how much faith I have in it. I've thrown feeders that are 45 grams. I've fished for Xander and perch on live baits on it and it's never let me down. I've got two of them and I really do put them through their paces. I've not had one single issue. So if you're looking for a rod that you can target multiple species on and leave in your car or in the shed ready to be used, then these have got to be them. I think they retail at about $49.99. You might be able to find them cheaper online, but fantastic rods. They look nice. They've got the cork handle on them. So um, highly recommended by me. Seems like another little feeding window. It's now about three in the afternoon. I'd say it's probably the hottest point of the day. Last fish I had that I unhooked in the margin was probably about four or five minutes ago. I really didn't think I was going to get much action during the day. Thought it would be early in the morning and then nothing at all. Anything around the sort of five pound mark, I'm just going to unhook in the margin. Right guys, that's pretty much it for the video now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And if you're interested in going bream fishing, then go out there and get it done. I would usually say that mornings and evenings are the best time to fish for them, but obviously today uh, we was getting consistent bites throughout the day. It's definitely worth fishing these carp lakes and going for the species that aren't targeted, such as the roach, the tench and the bream. So thanks again for watching. Stay tuned because there will be other videos. Catch you soon.